for meeting or count special council meeting, I should say. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. You have an agenda, which we are going to modify. And uh, we will be looking at uh, probably number three, number five. And that's about what we'll be looking at at this point. So if uh, we can have an, uh, a motion to approve the agenda as okay, moved by Councillor Donaldson, seconded by Councillor Murphy. All in favor, raise your hand. Contra-minded, carry. <laughs> so any conflict of interest declaration on, on any of the items that we're gonna be discussing? Seeing no, no one. Uh, so number three is we have a uh, regular council meeting of minutes of June the 9th. We need the motion to approve those. Moved by Councillor Donaldson, seconded by Councillor, Councillor Dr. Mall. All in favor? Signify, uh, signify by raising your hand. Contraminded. Carried. We have the uh, Recreation Committee uh, meeting minutes of April 16. Need a, a motion for those. Moved by Councillor Bork, seconded by Councillor Albright. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contraminded. Carried. So now we go to number five. And the first one is the second reading of the uh, land use uh, bylaw and the municipal planning strategies. That, can, that we just had our, uh, our public hearing on that. So I guess we're open for, for discussion on this. Oh yes, Councillor Strat. I'd like to move that uh, we uh, uh, approve the second reading of the LUS, LUB and LBS. We have a seconder, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'm gonna call for the question. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? It's carried. Uh, B, bylaw 9A, noise exemption. We've had a request to, for an exe exemption. Have you all had the opportunity to read the uh, request? Are there any discussions on it? Can we have a motion to approve the request? Moved by Councillor Albright, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. And a question by Councillor Surratt. Uh, just a question. Should we be sending letters out to the residents of that area on this? Uh, planned, uh, uh, yes, the, the music that's going to be played and that. Should the letter be sent out to the closest residents? Uh, just a question I'd have maybe to the CAO or, uh, or is it a practice that we would normally do? So the residents would know what's going on? Uh, so, Mr. Chair, so your your grant of exemptions by council uh, uh, instructions are included in the the noise bylaw. So, any so number seven would would indicate what the application process is to council to be granted an exemption from any of the provisions. So, the person who is grant who is asking for an exemption realizes that it is after nine o'clock and therefore against the intent or, or, or uh, the noise uh, bylaw. 
so um, so council by resolution um, may uh, may refuse to grant or accept an exemption so granted shall specify a time period of not greater than 10 years it's a long period shall be confirmed in writing by the CAO uh, shall include such terms and conditions as the council deems appropriate so if you if you uh, wish to include terms and conditions that the council deems appropriate you may do so via motion. So if that is, a, if to your question, Councillor Surrett, Deputy Warden Surrett, if that is something you feel would be important for you to make a decision, you can make that decision to do that. Um, so section eight, in deciding whether or not to grant an exemption under section seven, shall give consideration to the social or economic benefit to the proposed activity to the municipality the volume, nature, duration, and consistency of noise emission, the proximity and nature of abutting uh, or adjacent land uses, and the hours of operation of proposed activity, uh, some of which obviously has been noted uh, in the request. Any other factor relevant to balancing the interest? So, uh, so, so applications for an exemption for an activity of less than seven days duration do not require a public hearing pursuant to the section or notice pursuant to section 11. All other exemptions, renewals, or exemptions or amendments expanding the scope of an exemption shall only be granted after a public hearing at which council should give the applicant and any person interested in the application an opportunity to be heard. So the exemption for an activity of less than seven days duration is, is item nine in the bylaw. So under that bylaw, if we compare that to the request, it the, the event does not, the activity does not uh, exceed seven days in and of itself. Let me just go back to the letter here. I know it's a long answer to the question, but. Um, no, that's okay. Um, so the request is two hours between nine and 12, depending on the month. However, the permit for the sound system is being asked between July and December. So depending on your interpretation, the length of the permit uh, requests um, certainly is for more than seven days, right? Yep. So if that's the case, then the interpretation might be a public hearing would be in order. Uh, now public hearing, would be would, would require the request to be to be done uh, specifically in a public hearing by definition would would be something that would be advertised that, that that would satisfy what I my question because that's what I had read myself uh, Mr. Yeah. so and I just defer quickly to our clerk to confirm that what I've said is in some way resembles what your interpretation would be as well yes. So I think that depending on your interpretation of what the request is, uh, you could absolutely allow a permit for, let's say, the month of July, because you know it's only certain periods of time in the month of July. But anything beyond that, you may want, you may want to consider a more public request. I guess I just wanted to protect us as a municipality that we didn't let anybody, nobody knew about what was going on and. Uh, you know, we did it and we didn't send out a notice and we get some feedback, some flack. And that, that was my concern. But then, you know, I, I just want to point that out. Thank you. So if we had to go to public, uh, public hearing, that's a long process again. He wouldn't have his, his uh, he wouldn't have his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, permit by, by, by July for it to start in July. No, he would not. No. So you can, as council, you have, you have, this is all in your court. The council yeah. can make whatever conditions it wishes. I don't believe that you can uh, authorize the entire request without a public hearing. You, could, right. you could authorize the request for the month of July and then have it revisited. Because uh, and so you can reject this particular request and instruct the applicant to to, to do something different. 
because uh, we, we cannot allow that entire amount of time, in my interpretation, without some form of public consultation. And if the developer is looking to do something in July, which he is, then he would be allowed to do so in July, but, but, but not more than seven days without a public hearing. So oh, seven, be, seven days in the month, right? Not seven consecutive right. days. Well, how is the oh, someone wrong thing here? What does it say? Sorry about that, but I just want to be sure we don't get slapped. Yeah, there's there's no recommendation attached, so if the question is is is, is a valid question. So here is, um, all right. Applications for an exemption for an activity of less than seven days duration do not require a public hearing. Okay. Less than seven days duration. It does not say seven days in a row. My interpretation of that, because you're looking for an exemption after the hours of nine, if, if he was to do this through the day up until nine o'clock, he would be in compliance. That's right. He wouldn't need an exemption. So the exemption is for anything past nine o'clock. So you're not gonna go from nine o'clock to nine in the morning. So it's not a consecutive day. The interpretation is that if you have an event more than seven days, seven days or more. So if he has seven events okay. or less, he would not require public hearing. If he has more than seven, which the letter suggests very strongly he would, then he needs a public hearing. So the request either has to be tailored to only be for the month of July, for instance, or to a limit of seven days with any sort of extension being through public hearing right. or rejected outright according to this uh, bylaw. Uh, my suggestion would be that you can certainly, you can, you can, accept this request with conditions and the conditions in in this instance would be how long he actually has the ability to do this right so uh, contradicting thank you i'm just looking though uh this could possibly uh resolve itself in a month's time or so because he's looking for this permit due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the regu regulations that are set in by it uh, when he wrote that letter. But we know that they've opened up quite a bit since then. And um, by the end of July, it could be open again that you could have a group like he normally has up there and would not necessarily need a permit uh, to up till nine o'clock at night which he never had needed, nor does anyone else need, actually. Well, that's true. That's absolutely uh, another unusual consideration of this request is that the reason why he's asking is because of the COVID restrictions. Right. Uh, could change drastically in six months. So that just gives you more reason to put conditions on the request. Well, we. My, my view is that we could do it for, like, like you said, with, with conditions that he could at least do it in July, and then we'd have to revisit it if, if he still needs more or whatever. So at least it gives him the opportunity to do what he needs to do for the month of July. That would be my suggestion. Right, and so I just want to clarify, Mr. Chair, I just want to clarify one thing. If you provide the exemption for whatever the period uh, is um, you are giving you are giving that business and that person permission to do it. So if you receive complaints, the complaints would be denied because you have given that exemption for that particular period of time. Now, it, and, and so if you're only going to get like so, so the fact of the matter is, somebody with a little microphone may not may not be disruptive at all. But we don't actually know that until they do it. And, and so if we receive complaints, that might influence your, your decision to move forward uh, with, with this exemption, right? I, I, all I can say is, is, is if you make a decision to provide an exemption, 
you are you are uh, you are basically allowing that activity to occur. Yes. The same way that the noise bylaw would apply previous to 9 p.m. But, but I, I, I don't, I, I didn't understand that if we did July that we were giving an exemption that, that he, he, that we could give him July and probably he wouldn't get the, the, the beyond the seven days. I thought that's what we were talking about. I'm not sure then, I, I must have misunderstood that, that July, because we said something about we could give him July without, without a hearing. He, he, he can't if he has it, he can't if he has it, if he has uh, one every, every night, which I doubt that he's going to, I'm not sure. If he only had seven in the month of July, then he wouldn't be, we, it wouldn't be an exemption. He would fall under, under the guidelines that, that are set out, right? No, Mr. Chair, he would, if any, any, any sounds outside of nine o'clock, uh, oh yeah, exemption for that. I'm sorry. Right, we put him outside. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I misunderstood again. I, I, yeah. I thought you meant that we weren't going to follow the the, the the regulations. No, we we're following regulations, but he needs he needs the exemption to have it after nine, up to seven days. Correct. Okay. And if it's more than seven days, and that's yeah. the that's the difficulty. He probably couldn't tell you how many days he's going to do it in July because no. it's gonna depend on the clear sky. Exactly. So, and, 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 and the interest of a, of a customer, right? So yes. we don't actually know how many days in July uh, he, he will have it. And therefore, he, he, if he did it more than seven, then he would require some form of public hearing. Exactly. You could probably do a, con a conditional acceptance for a period of time uh, and, and then seek immediately to do advertising for a public hearing. Uh, I suspect that in the case of, as it relates to noise, what that would look like is that we would look at the radius of the people that could be impacted by that noise and they would be directly contacted. Right, exactly. Okay. So the, but there would also be a, a form of advertising that would be required. Right. Well, that's whatever council wants to do, I guess. It's up, it's up, uh, Councilor Threat. Uh, there is a motion on the floor. Is there not, Mr. Chair? Did we move? No, I don't think we, we, there was no motion on the floor in that one. Not that I'm aware of. Yes, there I, was. I, I asked for discussion. Yes, there is, Danny. Yes. Yes, there is. Oh, yes, it was moved by, it was moved. We made the motion. You're, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Question. Okay, question is called. So, so just just so that yeah, we're clear, the motion we allows it. The motion that is set right now is contrary to your noise bylaw exemption. Okay. Yes, it is. Right. But it's relaxing space music. It's not rock and roll and disco. It, it, it's your decision, Council. I made my mind up. So what? I, I, I would caution uh, Council to watch out because. There will be people watching this like a hawk. I caution you very much so on what we decide. Can we, my question is if we, let's say we, def, this def, motion is defeated, can we, can we move to allow it for the seven days? Yes, In, you can. Okay. So really question has been called on this. And usually when question is called, it ends discussion and we have to vote on it. Sorry. I, I was just going to ask, what is the motion? The motion is that we approve this letter, okay. this request. So really, discussion is, is, is ceases when 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 question is called. It ceases. Uh, uh, there's no more. There's no debate. It's we have to correct. Vote. Correct. Only clarification on the motion. Clarification on the motion is all we can correct for. We cannot. We cannot debate it anymore. So. Question has been called. All in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. One, two, three. All against. One, two, three, four, five. The motion as it stands 
is, uh, is defeated. Now, if we want to give this letter, th this one here, this request is, is uh, uh, defeated. However, can we have a motion to allow him for the seven days? Is, that, he, is that proper? Would yes. he have to ask for it? He, well, he's asked for, I think he'll take whatever he can get to, for he, now. But. Uh, on, on the question, Mr. Chair, you as council have the right to place conditions on his request? Yes. The, the the defeating of the of the motion does not exclude that opportunity for you to do okay other option would be to say try again sir um, understanding the, the rules that are in place okay the, the the gentleman that has received that has delivered the request is aware of the land of the of the noise bylaw is aware of the law yes yes so we can we can uh, uh, we can modify this then and vote on it again. You can choose to set conditions on his request. Set conditions on the request. The motion, yeah. or you can ask the applicant to resubmit. Okay. Uh, based That's on true. the lack of understanding of what seven days actually looks like. Exactly. Those are your options, or nothing, or you can reject it and be done. Yes, uh, comes for sure. Your options. Yeah. I would like to to uh, to, to uh, make a motion that we uh, that we uh, uh, allow the, the the gentleman who sent in the Deep Sky Observatory. It's, it's no secret that we give him the seven days as according to our uh, our bylaw. And then it'll give him a chance, possibly to uh, reassess what he has to do and send us another letter. But I would certainly like to make that motion. So we have a seconder, seconded by Councillor Albright. Any discussion on the motion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Question. Question has been called. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contraminded, carried. Okay. That bet keeps falling here. The next one is elections. It looks like I mean, we had decided to have paper ballots along with uh, uh, electronic voting, but with the situation that we're in, it, it appears like probably the safest way to have this election and to make sure is to go entirely with electronic voting. Councillor LeBlanc. I'll move that in the 2020 election due to COVID-19, we uh, implement solely an electronic voting ballot for uh, municipality of Argyle. Okay, is that a seconder, uh, uh, Councilor Murphy? Yes. You're seconding that. Any discussion on that? We've, we've, we've had that in, in 2012, we had, we had some concerns. We went with the paper and the uh, and the electronic in uh, 2016. So I'm not sure. I mean, I know some people are probably going to be disappointed with that. I've I've heard some people that we, I hope I hope we don't have to go the same way with with the phone. They call it telephone voting or whatever. But if that's the choice we have, that's the choice we have. Councillor Albright, sorry, I, I didn't want to. Nope, that's okay. Heavy. I think that's just what I was going to say. I think we're going to have some people who are disappointed, and I think we have some. We will have some people who won't vote because of this. But I really don't think we have a whole lot of other options because we just don't know what's coming. Exactly. So, as as much as I don't really like this option, I think it's probably the best option given the current situation. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent. 
in favor of this option either, but I think we have to look at the, the times we're in and, and what we have to do. Any other discussion? Councillor Dantramal. Yes, uh, you know, I, I know the, the segment of the population is that, uh, you know, will probably be uncomfortable voting electronically. The ones who traditionally use the paper ballot are, are the older people, and they're the people who are most vulnerable if there is a second wave or anything like that. So I, I'm still of the opinion that I don't want to give it to anybody in my community, uh, especially no. somebody that uh, might be, I guess, Older than me, how's that? Mm -hmm. Councillor Surratt. Just a quick comment. Uh, it's not only the older people. I've had uh, some people uh, tell me that uh, they don't trust the electronic voting. There's questions about what had happened during the, uh, the election for the uh, school board and where they found out who had voted for what. And the first thing they were called at home, how did they find their name? If it was supposed to be electronic and private, yada, yada, yada. So there are people that will not vote unless it's a paper ballot. But but again, uh, I, I wish you, you during the week before the election, people could go to an advanced poll. If they wish so and go with a paper ballot, just at that advanced poll for that week prior to the, the day of the election. I wish we could do that. That would just be two, a uh, couple of advanced polls, but but uh, again, I, I will support just the electronic on the other side. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councilor Digden, did you have something? No. Uh, I was just gonna back up what everyone's saying. I, sorry, I um, really wish that we could go with the paper ballot as well but we don't even know what it's gonna what october is gonna bring uh with you know is there going to be a second wave is going to be people even going to be allowed to get out and vote and stuff like that so i'd say the best thing we can do right now is work on this uh, make it accessible for everyone that wants to vote have help out there for them and uh, go go like that this time around CMU, she had something. Oh, uh, Councillor Bork is ahead of me. Councillor Bork. My question is, um, we're voting for electronic voting. I agree with that. Uh, that's what it is now. So say if later on things are more open and people can go about as usual, are we allowed to have uh, change our mind and have uh, both? Can we have paper and electronic? Can we decide later on? or it'll be too late? Uh, it's possible to do that later on. Um, I don't know when the absolute drop deadline would be. Uh, uh, elections Nova Scotia wants to know exactly how we're gonna run our elections. So there's that, and then there's also the, the logistics and coordination around it. So if, if you had to revisit it again, and uh, uh, it's not, in, possible it's highly non-recommended um but it's it's not for us to decide that right um i would i would probably provide information to council to let you know what the deadline absolute deadline might be uh surrounding that because we have advertising we have all these things that we need to do and of course that has to be specific to what we're doing so Yes, you could probably revisit this is, is the short answer, uh, but let's, we can't wait too long. No. Uh, just, sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, I was just wondering, um, even, okay, so say if we did vote for, like, we're, we're voting for electronic voting, can we, can we do like we usually do, electronic and paper now, and then, then when, if, if we can't do paper, we just drop it, or does it cost too much? Um, well, I mean, right now, your decision on record is to do both. So if you choose to not change that, then the motion on the floor um, really ought to be defeated. Um, and, and, and so that, if that's your choice, if your choice is to, is to go the all electronic route as we're recommending, uh, the motion 
would, would be uh, in the affirmative. Now, to change our mind again, again, it's, it is possible. It's possible. Uh, it, it's just a logistical piece and, and advertising just to make sure we have, the, we have it in place um, uh, in time. So as to confuse the voter. That's right, because you're going to have, like, like you said, Zero uh, Muse, we have, there's going to be some ads that are going to start coming out. And then once we put the ads out, everything has to be explained on how we're going to do things. And right. once we do that, we can't, we can't change because there's deadlines of when these ads have to go out too, right? There's yes. There's certain time that these ads have to go out prior to the election. So once those ads go out, we're stuck with what we're, we're going to be doing. It, and I think that's going to start probably by the end of July. It's typically late July when you would have to get that out. So you do meet another time. So if the world changes drastically, and it could, right? If, if we're allowed to do a lot more, then, then you can revisit it uh, then. Um, it will just take more or more organization on our part to, to, to make the adjustments. Um, yeah, the only other thing on the e-voting that was comment on people being called on the uh, school board election, right? So uh, Warden uh, Surat made that point. Um, they were contacted because people were aware that they voted. That information is public information. In fact, uh, if it's a paper ballot, your name is listed as being somebody who has voted. How they voted is, is not known it's in, and has been proven in the court of law that there is no way that the software company could distinguish if Councillor Sudet voted for Councillor Sudet or he voted for Councillor Muse uh, in an election. The issue you're referring to had to do with the African American, uh, African Nova Scotian uh, position that uh, there were an enormous amount of votes that didn't make sense to uh, the person who lost and so challenged the election. And as a consequence, those people were contacted because they voted in the African Nova Scotian election. And in many cases, they voted improperly. Uh, they did not realize that it was the African Nova Scotian. They thought it was Tri-County or, 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 or another election. So they got confused, unfortunately, and quite a few people did. So since then, there have been changes. And most of that confusion, uh, Deputy Warden, was actually not e-voting. It was more telephone voting. Uh, because e-voting has a lot more controls associated with it. Like, are you sure you want to vote with that person? Are you sure you got to click, click, click versus the telephone? It's like press one, press two and people panic. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so I just wanted to clarify that because it, it's not, um, just don't want people to misunderstand what actually happened in that election. Right? So. Okay. Uh, Councilor Dantramal. Oh yeah, just, I mean, we, we've got to, uh, it's an election, we gotta be transparent uh, and we just have to let the people know the reasons why we decided we wanted to do e-voting and I'm sure they're gonna understand. They're all, they're all in the same situation here. Uh, I think changing, going back and forth is, is a bad idea. We make a decision, we stick to it. That's right. Anybody else? So we have a motion on the floor. If there's no more discussion. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contra-minded, carried. So what do we do with uh, D, Municipal co uh, Consultation Workshop? Um, according to your policy around meeting times, uh, you're not to start a, a topic at this hour. So we have to defer that to another meeting. Okay. Yes. Just at this we don't, we're not supposed to start something after 9.45 according to policy. Oh, I see. Okay. So this, this cons uh, consultation uh, workshop is on the 29th of this month. It is. So the input that the council will be providing uh, will have to be done uh, via different means. So exactly. I, and there's a way. You, you can fill out the form and, and, and email it to them if you want to, to, yes. to have any kind of uh, uh, input in, in what's going to happen for sure. 
the purpose of bringing it to council is that you could collectively come to a decision on what the what you think as a as a council yeah. you would like to see happen. But as individual councillors, you're being asked to provide an opinion. Same thing. It's it's it, it's optional whether or not you want to do that as a council or not. So you we can we can take your input uh, individually and try to build something that represents you, or you can submit your own as individual elected officials. Okay, that concludes what we have on the agenda. Um, we will have to meet in July anyway, probably early July. Is that correct? Uh, we have we don't have a date yet uh, set for July because typically we would take uh, a, a break uh, yes. in July and August. Uh, we typically we would do that by motion in fact yes um which we can do now if you wish um I, I neglected to add that to the agenda but but typically what we do is we pass a motion to cancel the regular regular scheduled meetings of july and august and only meet on the request of council of the ward okay well we could still do that we knowing yeah. that we're going to have to call a meeting in in uh in july anyway so if Correct. someone wants to make that motion I'll make that motion that we uh, by, okay moved by Councilor Dosmol, second by Councilor Bork. So that would say that we, we we suspend the meetings for July and August unless something comes up and can, uh, meetings can be called by the ward. But, okay. But adding adding that this summer is not typical. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. Can't remind it. Carried. Move to adjourn. Meeting's been adjourned.